Welcome back to Conquest Creations with the final game in the Conquest Champions League. The winner of this game, well, they become the Conquest Champion. For those of you who don't know what the Conquest Champions League is, I took eight tournament veterans and pitted them against each other in an elimination style tournament. So far, there have already been six games in this series eliminating six of the eight players and this is the final game. It's my last alliance going up against Jeremy's Dunland. I'm Jeremy and I'm very happy to have made it all the way to the finals but I'm a little bit nervous because I get to play against Jacob who, as you know, is the person who runs this channel. So I don't know, I can't imagine him wanting to look bad on camera, that's going to be embarrassing. So I think he's going to play his best and he's got a really tough army. Luckily though, I've got my Dunland army. So I've got Thryden with the Legendary Legion, um, my heroes are Goroth and the Oathmaker as well. And then I've got a collection of 11 Wildmen, I've got about 5 Huskarls and four uh, Dunlin Warriors with bow, two Dunlin Warriors with shield, I wish I had some more of those, a banner bearer, and then I've got some fast moving stuff. So I've got some Grebine and four horsemen, which uh, two, two of the Grebine, which can help me in this mission quite a bit. For this game, I'm once again bringing my last alliance. I've got Gilgalad leading 10 elves, seven with spear and shield, and three with bow. But those seven with spear and shield get a one point upgrade called King's Guard, which gives them fight six instead of fight five. That makes them great for countering heroes. I've also got a warband of Numenorians led by a Numenorean captain. They've got a banner in there to help support my battle line. This army is super good, but it needs to stick together because I get synergy out of my elves and my Numenorians fighting together because I get that strength four and that fight six. So I want to stay together. But I've also got Gilglad, who I know can take on any hero in the game. And Jeremy's heroes don't look that big. So I reckon Gilglad will be able to kill any of them with ease. My main fear though is that Gilgalad is going to go nuts and just kill my low defense guys at ease. And if he can get to heroes, he starts getting his might back as well. So that's that's really concerning. I think I'm going to have to keep being aggressive. It's done really well in the last two games for me. I can go back and watch those if you want to see how I play. And I think that's been, been the way to go to the dumb. So I'm just going to be super aggressive and I'm going to make sure that I can kill some elves and men. In the Conquest Champions League, three scenarios are determined at random. Then, each player takes turn vetoing a scenario. This ensures it's balanced for everyone and makes for a much more interesting game. So we've randomly generated our three scenarios, heirlooms of ages past, storm the camp, and destroy the supplies. Now we're going to roll to see who will veto first. And that goes to Jeremy's veto first. Okay, Oh. That's a, that's a really tricky one. Heirloom is one that I know that a lot of people don't like, but I've actually got an army that I think can probably do it with the Crabane and the, the Cavalry. I can threaten that one. So I'm, I'm probably guessing that Jacob may get rid of that one. So it's either Storm the Camp or Destroy the Supplies. But the problem is I like both of those. I like them a lot. Um, I'm going to veto ooh, Storm the Camp, I think. So I'm going to spread everything out. All right, and you're correct. I will be vetoing Heirlooms. So let's play Destroy the Supplies. And our table for today is the outskirts of a city of Numenor. You can see by that nice looking Greek inspired architecture, we've gone for something straight out of the books here. And for destroy the supplies, we each have three supply markers. Each of these supply markers is worth two points if you're able to destroy it. To destroy it, you need to move into base contact with it and not do anything else that turn. So no fighting, no shooting, no casting any magic. And there's also points for wounding the leader and getting the break as well as two points for having a banner. I won the roll off to see who picks sides and deploys first and I chose the side of the table with the river. I just put my warband of Numenorians right in the middle so that they'll be able to spread out and cover all three of my supply markers. Jeremy responded by putting down a horde of wildmen in the middle of the board lined up against my warband. Now these guys are only defense 3, so my elven archers will wound them on 4s in the shooting phase, which means they will die pretty quickly, but Jeremy definitely knows that. My next warband and my last warband is Gilgalad and his elves. He's going with the Numenorians so that I can mix my Numenorians and my elves together and get the best synergy of that fight 6 mixing with the strength 4. Jeremy deployed Gorolf in the middle next. He went with the Huskars supporting those wildmen, makes those wildmen a lot better value. Then he put his archers on this flank. Now last game those archers took down a chariot and I know they're going to be going for Gilgalad's horse. So I really don't want to let them get an easy kill there. Thryden went behind the trees which I thought was interesting but he's on a horse so he's so much faster than everyone else. So in a few turns he'll be anywhere on the board anyway. And then Jeremy chucked the horseman and a Creebane over on that side. 
And this is the board after deployment. You can see we're a long way away, but it's about to be a slog forwards. Let's see who goes first. First turn priority. I'm on a one, you're on a two. So it goes to you. So I'm gonna start moving things forward. Not as quick as I can, but, but pretty quickly. I might be in range for a shot, quite possibly. So why not have some shots with these archers? I might move some of these wildmen out of the way. They can just run forward. I'm going to go right behind a line of wild men just in case some shots get through. So the all important cavalry is going to be essential in this game. Bryden doesn't want to commit just yet, so I'm going to stay 27 inches away from those archers. And that means that even if Jacob moves forward, I know he's not going to be shot this turn. Don't, don't want to lose a horse too early. That will be devastating for a big hero. And that'll go into my move. And in the middle, I'm just pushing everything up, but not as far as it can go. I also want to cover that other supply container because Jeremy's Creebane can move fast. Now on this side of the table, I want to just make sure my barrel is nice and safe. So we're pushing up full distance with all those warriors. And this is our board after movement. So yeah, Jeremy, goes to your shooting. Okay, they can all see Gilgallad. Yep. And they're all in range, but unfortunately there's a captain in the way. So let's watch him Perfect. fall off his horse. Five to hit, I've got uh, three of them. Three hits. Not too bad to start with. All right. In the ways. Yep, so firstly you see they get the captain or pass through. One of them hits the captain, two of them pass through. So let's do the captain. Nothing. Nothing. Now, a six. up or down on Gilglad. Yep. This is essential. You want them going down. One's going down. Yep. So this is on his horse. Can so you kill my horse? horse? Yep. Oh no. And Ryder, no. And of course, Gilgalad's lost his horse turn one. That is a <laughs> devastating loss, but it ten tends to happen quite often. And Gilgalad's horse has been slain, so we replace his mounted model with a version of him on foot. Okay, oh, <laughs> killing Gilgalad's horse is the best start I could possibly have here. Those Dunlin archers through the whole tournament have gone through taking out some serious value targets. Uh, the chariot class came, amazing. But Gilgalad's horse tops that in my mind. That was amazing. Now Gilgalad's slow. I can't imagine him doing much of the rest of the game. I'm all good here. To try to get Jeremy back, I'm going to shoot at his hero. We're going to go for the Wildman Oathmaker. Now he's got two in the ways, but I'm fine with that. Now I've hit twice. First row of in the ways, they both get through. Second row of in the ways, they both get through. So two hits on the Wildman Oathmaker. Let's see if we can get him back. And no, we can't. Defense four. I've got these two Numenorians who can just see those Dunlin archers there. So we're going to try to get revenge for Jeremy killing my horse, hitting on fives, and they've both missed. Takes us to priority for next turn. I'm on a two and Jeremy's on a six. So goes to evil. Mm. So I've just got to keep going with the plan at this point. Um, I don't have to worry about the speed of the good side as much anymore because I've, I've had the best shooting phase ever. So I'll keep moving these guys forward. Uh, they'll probably be able to get some shots on my cavalry and things eventually, but I can't just have them hiding around in the middle of nowhere. So I'll make it so it's tough. I'm tempted to keep going forwards with these shooting guys, but I've killed my main value target. So they're going to be actually pretty good in combat. Um, I don't want to get in combat just yet, so I'm going to put these guys around here. Make sure I've, I hold up that area. A line of wildmen. And they all should be outside six, which they are. So always good to check that. You don't get yourself in trouble. Over here, let's go for this barrel. Within 12 inches? Yep. Alright. So that goes into my move, and as you can see, this Creebane is within 12 inches of this objective, so I have to protect it, otherwise next turn, Jeremy could just fly up and take it. So to do that, I just need to have enough guys around it that I've got control zones blocking it out. And we'll send one more Spearman over there. Now that's a good temporary solution for next turn, but Jeremy's also going to be coming in with those knights, so I actually have to protect it properly. So I could just run everything forwards, but I'm actually not going to be doing that. I'm going to move across to the side because my archers can do so much damage to Jeremy, so I really need to use that so that he can get into combat, but he's already softened up. And Gilglad's going to stand up, which is very unfortunate that he even has to do that at all, and just go across three, but not blocking my archers there. We're going to make our little wall ready to respond to whatever Jeremy can throw at me. 
And on this side, just keeping this objective safe, but I want those two archers to shoot, but they'll jump in front of those spearmen when the time comes. And into the shooting phase, my two Numenorean archers did well taking out a Dunlan archer. That's revenge for Gilglad's horse. So my next round of shots are these two elven archers. Now they're going at Thryden with an in the way. I want to get revenge for Gilglad's horse. So here we go. One's hit. Gets past the obstacle. So does it hit the rider or the horse? Hits the rider. Not what I was hoping for, but I can still put a wound on him. And a four will not be enough. Mm -hmm. So the rest of my shooting was ineffective, which takes us to priority. I want a six this time to Jeremy's four. All right, this was not the one that I wanted to win. So with my move going first, I really need to make sure these objectives are safe because Jeremy can throw a lot at them. So I'm going to totally surround this barrel with warriors who are ready to fight. That means Numenorians in the front and Elven Spears in the back. Along with warriors being ready to fight, we also need might to be able to maintain our lines in case we need to do anything to, just to keep that safe. So Gilglad's going over there to that side. And this is my side of the board after movement. At the moment, I'm not being aggressive, so that's gonna have to change soon, but I really just wanna make sure everything's under control and Jeremy's not just gonna snag all three of mine before I commit to running forwards. So Jeremy, that goes to your move. So what I'm gonna do is use this bridge and water to my advantage Send the Crabane over here. Let's keep these just a hair out of this Elf Lord's face. Trying to stay safe from Gilglad with Wildman. Uh, where are your archers over here? They're all over here, aren't they? You've got five there, yep. So you'll be able to so be safe. So you just block off by getting your own guys in the way. Because you were just too nice to do that. Yep, yeah, they're all going to have something in the way. Make sure I've got some woods in the way. And I should be outside six. I'll just make sure it's really clear. And it's just thriving to go, just jumping forwards. All right. Getting as many away tests as possible. It's going to be quite a lot for those archers to get through that. And in my shooting phase, I started with these two Numenorians on the side. They did nothing. And now I've just gone with my three elf archers. I've killed the wildman in front of Gorolf. I'll have two shots on Gorolf. Now needing fives to wound and nothing. And on the rest of my shooting did nothing. So I was really hoping to have several kills by now, but it's just two so far. There's no combat, so that'll go back into priority. Mm. I'm on a one and you're on a six. I'm happy to have lost that one. Yep. Okay, so for here, I think now's the time to go forward and just try to push an advantage. So let's bring things forward. If the elves want to come out, I can almost certainly get the, the birds in next time. And you've got the knights as well. I'll stay a decent distance away. And the troops are coming forward, inviting a fight. Now Jeremy's troops are a lot weaker than mine, so I'm happy to fight a front-to-back shield wall, because I'll definitely win it. He's put Thryden over on the other side there. And then he's just building a little wall in case I do go aggressive and go for his objective. So this is the board after Jeremy's move. Now this objective looks like it's in a lot of trouble, but this one he's spread out from, but he's leaving that creebane there, so I'm always gonna have to protect it. So I'm starting my move on this side of the board, and as you can see, there's an absolute horde of Dunland and Thryden coming for these guys. Now I think I'm gonna lose this objective anyway, so I'm gonna do something maybe surprising, and I'm gonna completely abandon it. I'd rather keep all my models alive, so everyone is moving their full distance back to the rest of the army. I'm really shocked that Jacob abandoned that object there. Um, it's actually probably a good move because uh, I wanted to go and get those four to six guys and the objective, and I sent enough of my force to get there. And now I'm gonna get the objective, but I've got a significant amount of force that needs to go and move around, and it might end up bottlenecking itself around that river. So it's actually a solid move. It took me by surprise. I did not expect that move at all, and it, it may pay off. I'm a bit worried about it. Now in this area here, that Creebane is threatening my objective, and I'm never gonna chase it down, but I need to be aggressive. So I'm running forwards so that hopefully we'll be able to go and threaten Jeremy's objective. I'm also sending my Numenorean captain across and he'll be within six of two of them so that he can be the might that they need to help punch through. Now this was a sneaky play from Jeremy. This Creebane here is within 12 of the back of this objective so I have to keep that one safe. 
And this is what it looks like after movement. Gilgalad's coming across. So that's going to go into my shooting. And my shooting took down this Wildman here. Just hoping to create a space for those models. Not because two-handed sure. weapon. <laughs> and my Numenorians have killed another two-handed ah. weapon guy. <laughs> and that takes us into priority for next turn. On a three to Jeremy's one. So I've got oh, it. Yeah. And to start out my movement, these guys are running into combat. They've got the distance to run and then wrap around. So that's what they're going to do. And then the elf will stand in between them and potentially spear support both of them. And my captain is just running up there. He's all by himself. That's not something that you see that often, but he'll be within six of them. Back here, I want to make sure my line is nice and strong. Gilglad's going to stand in a spot where he's going to be able to fight. I'm going to keep guys in front of this objective. And importantly, we've got reinforcements coming. And that's the end of my move. You can see one of those objectives is abandoned. So Jeremy, goes to your move. Mm. Well, there is nothing like putting a creeping in the middle of a dice pool. Or it can threaten two objectives. <laughs> and I just want to start bringing some infantry around here. So let's put them just using some cover. There's not a lot of bow shots there, so let's just keep going and rely on evil being evil. I will put so a that's skull in the barrel. The lucky guys who get the two victory points for their army. Great honor. Yep, let's keep the cavalry going. Oh, it's going defensive. Yep. The old defensive cremain. Now, these cavalry, I can either commit one of them into here. Um, I get a charge, which is nice, but I might need them a little bit later. So what I'm actually going to do is send them back for next turn. So I'll go 10 inches there, make sure I'm 6 inches away, so that I can guarantee get a charge if James so, stays there. A bit of an insurance policy. Absolutely. Now, I've got a choice here. I can either go in to try and pin Gilgalad, or I can just keep running away and be, be a sneaky person. I do need some kills here. Do I need them this turn, though? And Jeremy's just forming a line in front of my last alliance. That looks nice. I can shoot them this turn and then punch into them with my Numenorians and Elves next turn. And Thryden coming around. Yep, so he's going to be within 10 there. Uh, you're going to have to break through a lot to get to him from there. So let's leave him there. And I think that's all of them. All right. So that'll go into the shooting phase. And my shooting, despite hitting lots of stuff, failed to wound, which is really not what I've wanted. If I could have gotten a few more kills, it really could make a big difference here, especially because Jeremy was clever and he's threatening my captain with Thryden there. So first combat is Goro fighting an elf in a Numenorean. I'm on a six, you're well, on a, a six, six as well. but I've got a fight six elf in there, so mm. I will win that. Sure. Now you are defense five, if I'm not mistaken. I am. So I'll wound you on fives. And nothing. Nothing. And the combat's on the road. I pushed one of the Dunlendings back, and then looks like I'll lose this fight and push back. I really want to be getting more kills, and I've been lacking so far. And at the end of the turn, Jeremy, what happens here? I have destroyed these supplies. The Dunlendings have drank and whatever in here, and, and I'm excited about that. So you've got a two-point lead now. Mm. So priority went to Jeremy, and I called a heroic move with my Numenorean captain here. That's because Thryden could charge him down otherwise. Jeremy, how did you respond? Uh, no response for me. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. All right, so that goes to my move with the Numenorian captain. So my captain's going to move first, and he's just going to charge this side of the Wildman, just like that. Now, he only had two warriors, these two in charge range, or in range of his heroic move, and they are actually going to run forwards. So with my heroic done, that goes to Jeremy's move. So let's try... I don't need to engage these on these turn. So let's throw and see what I can put into this guy. It's very tempting though to just go in and have a have a run at him. We'll see, we'll see. So having a crack, trying to get the kills there. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the way to do it. Because if I can kill one or two of them, then I'm, I'm in a good spot. Thryden coming, keep him in a nice heroic range, and then jump a Virgo with the control zone there. So all of a sudden, very little of your army is, is where it used to be, in the middle there. Correct. 
So Jeremy's left this middle force looking very weak. Even with these guys running around the side, I reckon I can outmuscle him. I've got Fearless Wildman at the moment, so I do want to pin Gildeland. I think that's probably a pretty solid move. So let's bring this one as our sacrifice. He's going so to come one in. One brave Wildman. Yeah, he'll wrap around this way and engage the Spearman as well. I do want to pin these ones because I don't want them to wrap around too much. But I've got to choose carefully who I engage them with. A Wildman into these two. Let's not overthink this. Let's put Goroth up the stairs and around here. So just there. I will definitely put the Wildman in. So he'll go into the same combat as Goroth. Now, Jeremy was moving his banner next. Originally, he put him in a pretty nice spot right in there that will block a heroic combat from Gilglad, making him useless, but he actually changed his mind at the last minute and put him behind the Wildman. I think Gilglad's got a free run for heroic combat out of there. Now, these, this guy's kind of important at the moment. So I can either come here and use it as a screen here, which is not a bad way of doing this because I've got so much here. I can go pick off some clever targets if I want, force the, the guys to come back. Or I can just be be waiting and keep threatening this one. Oh, that's a that's a that's a very tough choice. Um, I don't want all these guys coming around here, so I am going to put it. Now, Jeremy sending this bird in is great for me. That means he's not going to be threatening that extra barrel there if I manage to kill it. I think this might have been a mistake from Jeremy. To start out with, I really want to attack this Creebane. If I can get it out of the game, that's a big win for me. So I'm sending some of these guys that were protecting my objective to wrap around it and get the trap. I reckon I'll be able to kill it in one turn. And then these archers will go in. I want insurance. I want it gone. So to start out with in here, my banner's just jumping across a little bit. And I'm going to send an extra Numenorian into that combat to help out Gilglad. Now on this side, I want to make sure that barrel's still safe on this side, but I do want to be getting kills. So I'm sending these guys in to maximize my odds and I'm leaving a guy there to protect that barrel. And this looks like the board after movement. I've got no shooting this turn. I'm Ooh. guessing you've got none either? No. All right. Well, let's go into combats. Okay. So I'll call a heroic strike with um, Goroth. Yep. And a heroic combat with uh, the Oathmaker. All right. Strike and combat combo. That's really interesting. Wasn't fully expecting that. Um, now, I could combat with Gilglad, but then if you just send someone who's heroic struck into him, he's still got a decent chance of, of actually killing you because your strike might not get to what it needs to go to. Um, I'm going to take the risk. I think I need to at this point, so I will call a heroic combat with Gilglad as well. So let's roll to see whose heroic goes off first. I'm good. You're evil. On a 5-6, it, it goes to me. So nice. So, so, got, so it's just him against that one, isn't it? One wildman fighting Gilglad with two Numenorians. So Gilglad will be the bronze dice. Here we go. I've got a six. I don't. No, a surprise there. And let's get the kill. Oh, got him. <laughs> <laughs> there was a not, trap there. So not comfortably, but he was, yes, trapped. And Gilglad's moving first. He's charging this Dunland and he's wrapping around into the Oathmaker. Big stuff up from Jeremy there, but I've got to exploit it because I'm on the back foot here. Now, I have made a massive mistake here and I'm, I'm very angry at myself for it. I have let Gilglad loose. The next row of combat is the Wildman Oathkeeper who's now fighting Gilglad. It's not a good position for anyone to be in. Now, let me just see what I've got there. I've got a Huskull who's not spear supporting and I've got the banner doesn't have a spear, so I've just got three dice. All right. I've got a six. You do. And you can't beat that. No. So. So I'll push him back. Your I'm defense here. four, I believe. Yep. So I'll kill you. I'll wound you on threes. Yep. So um, we'll do the first one. That's not a wound. Nope. So I'll Lord of the West it. That's one wound, two wounds. And I have to do all three before you yeah. fade. So I'll put the third one in. You could have rolled them all together. But that is the Oath Keeper uh, slain by Gilglad. Yeah. Yep, there we go. That's... And, importantly, Gilglad's got blood and glory, so I go up to full might again. I get mm. one point of might every time I kill a hero. That puts me in a great position, taking out the Wildman Oathkeeper with some might. Goroth responded by killing a Warrior of Numenor. That's alright, I'm still happy. And then, a Warrior of Numenor got pushed back by Dunlending, and then an Elf got pushed back by Dunlending, and then an Elf with a Spear support and a Banner got pushed back by some Dunlendings. What's going on here, guys? Come on, pick up the slack. Another Elf got pushed back really getting some frustration here because I want to be getting a lot of kills and while I did have a great turn with Gilglad, this turn could be a lot better. You can see I lost an archer there and one of my warriors in Numenor lost a fight. 
My elf finally won a fight the first out of my warriors, but didn't kill a wildman. I finished off with killing the Creebane, which was a really, really good way to finish. Now this is my flanking force. Started out with my elf winning a fight by shielding and just pushing back to Dunlin. And then my warrior Numenor unsurprisingly got killed by those two charging cav. I then had a warrior manage to push back a wildman. I really want to be getting kills here because this force is going for Jeremy's objectives. My captain finished off with getting a kill. And this is the state of the board. Dunlin are up to eight casualties and the last alliance is on three, but they are in the lead with the barrels. So let's roll for priority. I am a cox dice. I'm a one, so that stays evil. That's super frustrating. Ingress. I'll be calling a heroic move with... I think I have to go with both heroes here. I'll definitely be calling one with Gilgalad. Okay. Um, so he's down to two might. So I will call one with uh, Gorok. Yep, not a surprise. So he's got one might left. Yeah. Um, and if I don't call it with this guy, he's just going to get absolutely monstered by... Thryden, so he, my Numenorean captain, will call one with his last point of might. So we need to roll off to see who goes first, Gilgalad or Gorov. So let's see the roll, Jeremy. A four Gilgalad. will go to Gilgalad. Yeah. So Gilgalad's going first and he's going to charge that Dunland banner. Now next, my Warrior of Numenor is going to charge Gorov and a friendly Wildman. So I've really got to engage everything here. So we'll start with this Spearman. Charging and wrapping, and this warrior going into combat there. Now we can definitely get some traps in here, so I gotta move carefully. And that's after my first heroic, so it goes into my second heroic. I've gotta keep this captain safe. I'm gonna give something, Jeremy, something to think about here. My captain is gonna run around behind this here, mm -hmm. and then this guy's gotta stay within line of sight, so he's just gonna run to there. That elf will sacrifice his movement, mm -hmm. just be a roadblock. So, Jeremy, that's your move. Mm, it is. So, Creebane going into the warrior, not the captain. Yep. Alright. My thinking with that captain going wide is if Thryden wants to chase him down and get further away from the rest of my army, that's great. Also, Thryden's only fight at five, same with my captain. So, there's a chance that I could win a fight, tie him up for an extra turn, and maybe even kill his horse. And then he's way far away from the rest of his army, so he won't be able to support the battlefield. And Jeremy, unsurprisingly, is just pushing his other troops that are in that area forwards towards the battle line. And on this side, it's just pushing up with Dunlin. Now, I've already moved in there because of my heroic, so those knights are going wide so they can threaten the objective. And this is the end of the move phase. Jeremy's played this really well. He didn't engage with these two knights. It surprised me. And Thryden's got a combat there who's got options to go for my captain or come at the objective. I think I got too excited killing Dunlandings and forgot that I need to protect my supply markers. Now Jeremy was clever, he didn't move these archers so they were able to shoot into those elves there. Unfortunately he got no kills but it was absolutely the right play because I can't hit him back if he shoots me and he wounds me on sixes anyway. That'll go into combat. Jeremy, do you have anything to declare? Yeah, I'll do a heroic combat with Ryan. I'm going to call a heroic combat with Gilgalad. Mm, well, I'll strike a glory. Alright, that will go into the roll-off, see whose heroic goes first. Doesn't really matter here. But it'll go to me. All right. So Gilglad mm -hmm. is on a six, and a four will kill the banner. This is really big. That banner, if Jeremy had kept it alive, would have been worth two points at the end of the game. Now that makes us even because he's gotten one of my objective markers for two points. Now with Gilglad, I am actually going to be charging Goroth, even though he's struck. I'm fight nine. I still think I can beat him. And next is the heroic with Thryden. Yep. So I've got one warrior who's going to shield. He's going to try to win this and stop the heroic at all costs. Yep, I'm just going to use my sword. I've got a five. Got a six. Goes to you. And very dead. Now, are you going to go for the captain or go for the objective? All right. That's an answer. Yep. So you've got priority. Where do you want to go next? Uh, let's see what happens over here. All right. My captain is in danger, and in the meantime, Jeremy killed my elf. Next, it's my captain fighting his hardest against Thryden. I'm going to shield. Yep. I'm on a four, you're on a five. Yeah. So mm. I've we were equal fight. I could have really hurt you there, but no. Absolutely, you could have, but I have to go so through So you have point. one. I think. Look like uh, there's two, two from Thryden. So even if I save one with my fate, the other one doubles and takes him down. So yeah, that is captain dead. Losing the captain hurt, and I responded by, hey, losing another fight. I've 
Rolled really subpar with these fights in here, at least Jeremy isn't converting to the kills. I had lost that fight in a pushback, and next one was my elf who managed to take down a wildman. That's good, any kill is a kill, so I'm happy about it. Following that, one of my Numenorians pushed back after he lost a fight, and then we managed to kill a Dunlan Archer. Now, I hate those Dunlan Archers, they killed Gilgalad's horse. And now there's one fight left this turn. It's going to be Gilgalad fighting Gorolf. Strike. So, Gorolf strike takes him to fight value 8, not high enough. I need to get some really good luck with Gorolf here. So can I kill him in one turn now? Highest of a 3, but I've got a Lord of the West reroll. To oh. a six. And that would be, if I do a point of might, that would be 3 wounds and guarantee the kill and I'll get the point of might back, so that's... Or do I Lord of West it? Oh, it's tough. Lord, if I Lord of the West it and it turns to a two, you're not dead. So no, I'm not risking it. Yep, Point of mine. Gorof is down. Yep. Ugh, and priority? It's mine. Goes to Dunland. None. Uh, yeah, none from me. Sure. Goes to you. So now that Jeremy's killed that flanking force, I've got no hope of getting his objectives. So Jeremy's able to send them forward. This is disappointing for me because I'm not getting many points and Jeremy's got a lot of troops attacking my objective here. He's even got extra ones there to send towards the battle line. Around the back, he was just pushing into combat here. Now he wasn't going to sit back and shoot me this time because he's moving first. So I could just go and charge into him and he's just trying to stack these fights in his favor. When it came to those knights, I was expecting them to go after the barrel, but Jeremy showed his confidence and he went into the battle line because he knows he can get that barrel next turn. He pushed Thryden and the Creebane up, and there's a lot of force coming to hit me, and the rest of those troops just pushed up. In my move, I'm mainly tied up in here, but I've got a few models to move, so this elf is just going to take on this wildman just to take one more model away from that objective, hopefully. And in here, we'll just shimmy around so I don't get trapped. So, start of the combat phase. Jeremy, what's happening? I'm going to do the Dunlin and Warcry. It's not the ideal spot for it, but I am running out of turns, and if I can get a couple kills here, I might be able to break this good army at some point. The Dunlin and Warcry, and that means that everyone within 12 inches of Thryden in one fight phase gets one plus to wound. Let's, let's go straight into combat. Now, they've all got plus one to wound. Plus one to wound on these Dunlinings is terrifying. I still managed to win a fight and push them back, but most of these guys are strength four and have an actually can piercing strike to get to strength five. Combine that with plus one to wound and that's gonna kill anything. You can see there's a lot of fights just backing up here. Not a lot is dying so far. I've won a few and Jeremy has won a few. And he managed to push back my banner bearer and I really need that banner to stay safe. Luckily the guy in front of it survived. Jeremy's now starting to put pressure on that objective, but I've still managed to win a few more fights. And you can see Gilglaz just blue tacked to that staircase there as I took down a Huskar. Wow, nothing yeah, no, well, That's not what I expected that turn. Not at all. Cry was a total waste of time, but I didn't die. So a very uneventful fight phase. Let's go into priority. Three, two or two. So it goes to good. Are you going to call any heroics? No heroics, any. All right, my move. This Numenorean is just going to jump into those, but that... Barrel is lost. And on this side, we're just pushing into combats everywhere that we can. And in Jeremy's move, he's just bringing his troops into the battle. There's a lot that were coming down from on top, and you can see here he's placed his Creebane in base contact with that barrel. I'm not going to be able to stop it. That's going to be two points to Jeremy for destroying my supply marker. I'm ahead on kills, but not on points, and he sent Thryden into the battle. This is kind of risky because if I can get a wound on Thryden, that gets me VPs. So this is our board after movement, takes us into the combat phase. Jeremy, any heroics? Yeah, I'm going to go with Thryden now. I think I need to just maximize some kills and All make right. sure I can get the break. Try to get the break. So, that goes into the fights. So let's, well, we start with Thrydens. I'm not calling anything. So it'd be Thryden and a wildman. And I've got my one archer who's sitting on a four. I've got goes to you. Five, yeah. And he is a very dead archer. Oh. Let's see how many wounds he takes. Oh, oh my goodness, not a good roll, but he's still dead. Uh, strength <laughs> five, getting strength strength five. So he, he took yeah. six wounds. Took six wounds. Not bad for Thryden. Yep. This one into the elf there, and let's keep Thryden going forward. Just into another guy. Makes yeah. sense? Yeah. And next up in the fights, these two elves lost the fight again. The odds of them losing these three fights in a row and dying is so insanely low. My next elf managed to push back some warriors, which is... A good result, but I'm still not impressed. 
Managed to push back a few more Dunlinings and not killing those Wildmen is brutal and I had another elf die and a Numenorean warrior die. And then my elf managed to kill a Wildman and push back a Huskar. This was also followed with another one of Jeremy's troops going down and a few more of my guys losing fights, pushing back and dying and finally lost my last Numenorean on that flank. And oh, end of the turn, barrel. another barrel and gone. And the has not broken yet. I'm and off. last alliance broke. That was, the past few turns have been atrocious for us, but you're still one off breaking? I'm one off breaking. All right, well, priority. Let's see it. Yeah. I'm one of six to your one. Okay. So Are you going to call anything? I will I've got call priority. it. I will yep. Call it. Um, I will call it as well. Yep. So at least that makes Gilgalad have to move first, so Gilgalad can't get him to thrive. And exactly. Off the, the move. So. You roll off? Let's see it. Four, five, six, please. No, goes to Dunlin. That could be the final mm. war cry that they need. Let's just push him in. Yep, nothing too fancy. No, and he'll call with me. He gets um, up to that one there. Doesn't get those ones in the backs. So let's go, uh, first of all, a Huskar using the bodyguard into Gilgalad and friend. I certainly wasn't expecting a break here. It just goes to show that sometimes the dice don't roll on your side and you need to have contingency plan on contingency plan. At the moment, I just want to keep that barrel alive and try to break Jeremy. Well, my move's going to be pretty straightforward. That elf spearman is going to stay there in base contact with his friend. Mm -hmm. So, so now I can shoot into combat and try and get the barrel. And I will need to take courage test for him, sorry. Uh, no, he's courage five and I've rolled two twos. Yeah. That is absolutely devastating because you're just going to walk a guy in there now. I will. That's going to be... Wow. That was the worst courage test possible to fail. Mm. So, enjoy your two victory points. So, I've got to be very careful I don't stuff this one up. That's true. <laughs> I'm going to go this one into here, leaving a nice gap. This guy, does he have the range? Two inches to get there? He does. So, he's going to go into here to All take right. the barrel. And then this one will go... I still want to get that banner eventually. Um... I've charged there, so that guy's going to be in a bit of trouble. I might go and Huskull over here. Yep. Seems like it's going to go to the combat phase. Mm. Jeremy, do you have anything to declare? Uh, I have. I declare I have no might and no war cry. So All you're right. welcome to use your last point of might. You're well, back. you're one off breaking, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm going to save it because it's not... I'll yes. break you anyway, so it doesn't give me Correct. anything... And you need to go kill Thryden, and you need to... Yeah. Well, I need to kill Thryden, so I'm just thinking, if I use it, I still have to go into that Wildman, so nope, not calling anything. Yeah, yeah, no, two, one point of mine for two shots at Wildman, no. This fight phase started off strong with Gilgalag getting a kill, not very surprising. Managed to push back a Dunling Horseman, lost an Elf, but after that my army really let loose. We managed to win a lot of fights and get a lot of kills. This is exactly what I needed because this has broken Jeremy's Dunlin force, meaning we're both broken, but he's got bad courage. So hopefully he runs. I'm going to use my archer who did not fight a combat, did not shoot, did not use magic powers. He was trying to, but he didn't to get the last barrel. Ouch, that feels really bad. Not quartered yet. That goes into priority for the maybe the last turn. Goes to Jeremy. I will call a heroic move with Gilgalad. Yep, courage test. All right, Gilglad is a hero of legend, so he auto passes yep. on his first go. Um, and now we just want to hurt Jeremy, make him feel bad, and ideally damage Thryden, which I won't be able to do with Gilglad. So he's just going to charge those two. These two will charge Thryden, hopefully do a wound to him. Um, and now I'm going to let you do courage tests. Now, Jeremy is broken, which means that every one of his models has to take a courage test or they're removed from the battlefield. I was really hoping to do a lot of damage here because I was able to tie up Thryden. His courage to Kareebane passed, of course, was able to fly into combat. He lost a few warriors, but overall, not as many as I was hoping for. And then it went into the combat phase. As you can see, he lost a few models and I lost a few models here, taking out that archer but managed to push back that four wound Kreebane. Those things never die in combat. They are tar pits. Got pushed back by Thryden, pushed back a horseman. And at the end of that fight phase, Dunlin has been courted, ending the game. Definitely not the result the last alliance was looking for. And with that, I am proud to announce the first winner of the Conquest Champions League, meaning the first Conquest Champion is Jeremy, the Green Dragon. Congratulations to Jeremy.
And that's it. Jeremy is the Conquest Champion, winner of Season 1. We'll see how Season 2 goes, and Jeremy's definitely got some pressure on him. Can he back up the Season 1 win with another win in Season 2? Thanks for watching. This has been Conquest Creations.